The Minnesota State Mankato Department of Theater and Dance opens its studio season with Copenhagen by Michael Frayne on September 15th through the 18th in the Andreas Theater. Individual tickets are available online at msutheater.com or by calling the Theater and Dance box office at 507-389-6661 beginning September 13th. And now here to tell us a little bit about Copenhagen is the director, Michael James. Copenhagen is actually a mystery play. It uh, occurred in 1941, a meeting between two Nobel Prize winning physicists, uh, Niels Bohr and Werner Heisenberg. Both of them created science that eventually led to the development of the atomic bomb. By this time, Copenhagen, Denmark, was under Nazi occupation. Werner Heisenberg, who was German and still living in Germany, came back to visit his mentor, Niels Bohr. And something happened while he was there. A conversation that they had ended a 20-year relationship. And 70 years later, scientists and historians are still searching for the answer of what happened that was so drastic that could end such a relationship. And that's what Copenhagen is about, is trying to recreate that event and solve that mystery. And it's based upon uh, the works of Michael Frame, the playwright, who was also known for directing Noises Off, which is completely different. And he did 18 months of research and writing the play. There is resolution in the play. There is, uh, there is pardon me, uh, con conclusion in the play, but no resolution. We still don't get the answer. So the mystery will still remain. And with me, Anthony DePoto plays Niels Bohr, and Joseph Crook plays Werner Heisenberg. So I will let Niels Bohr here give you his impression of what it's like to be in a mystery play about something that actually happened. Well, it's quite unique, actually. Um, it's, it's quite an experience being in this play. Uh, the question is, always throughout the play, is why did Werner Heisenberg come? None of us know that answer, really. And it keeps going back and forth. And being in a mystery play where there is no definite answers, it's very interesting. And it uh, tests us as actors as well as a director, too. And the only person who might know why Heisenberg came back to Copenhagen in 1941 to visit Niels Bohr would be Heisenberg himself, but even that answer is not given in the play. And what is interesting is I've actually been in touch with one of Werner Heisenberg's sons, who is a physics professor in New Hampshire. Joe and I happened to be working on the show one afternoon when Heisenberg's first email came through. Yeah. I, I think that um, to have a script that's as detailed as this one, with so many different variables and so many different possibilities, really poses a challenge because it, it as an actor and as a director and, and as a team, you have to make the choice, okay, what does this line mean? And what are we going to portray to the audience in this line? And those choices that we make really affect the overall production and the overall interpretation of the show. Uh, one of the things that you're going to notice when you enter the theater is what most people would say, there is no set. Well, yes, actually there is. The set is more intricate than it may actually appear. Uh, there is a painted surface on the floor that is actually a recreation of the crater left by the Trinity bomb when they were first testing the uh, atom bomb. And then overhead there will be this wonderful structure that is symbolic of the atom. Um, don't let that simplicity fool you and you think, how can we sit and watch an entire show for two and a half hours that happens just all in a circle? Even though I've seen the show as the director and, and did all the mechanics of where the actors go, I'm still mesmerized every night about what these guys can create in a circle. And, and behind me now, our scenic designer is actually doing one of the uh, one of the applications to the floor. Again, it's not as simple as it seems. They have to put down one layer of black, then a layer of white, but a special way that the white is done, and then they'll be doing the painting of the actual crater on top of that. So it's the simplicity of that set, or the abstractness of that set, actually works. I think if we had what most of the public would consider a regular set with walls and all sorts of furniture and the trappings, it would detract from the play. And this is working beautifully. And I think you're going to be surprised. And I, I know that people tend to be afraid of this play, audience and performers alike, because it's science heavy. Yes, it is a science-based play, but it's not a play about science. It is truly a play about a human relationship between Werner Heisenberg and Niels Bohr. And then there's a third character who is Niels Bohr's wife. So don't be afraid of the science because as you get absorbed into the play and this mystery that we're trying to solve, the science becomes secondary. And you realize that you're drawn into this relationship and what happened between these two men. 
And the science, yes, it keeps coming back, but it's not so daunting that you lose track of it. And for you guys, what was it like to first have to deal with the science, and how is it for you now? Uh, at first, it, it is very, it's quite intimidating. I mean, you, you're looking at it, and we're talking about quantum theory and uh, quantum mechanics and stuff that I've never actually taken physics in high school. I'll tell you that, sorry. Yeah, I, uh, it was obvious. Uh, <laughs> but as you get more comfortable with the lines, as you move about the space uh, while talking as the character, I mean, you become more comfortable, and with that, you become more confident in what you're saying. Yes, I had to do some research on uh, atomic theory. I had to. It's the only way I'd understand it. But definitely, you get comfortable the more you do it and talk about it. What about for you? I, I think as, as an actor and as a performer, Michael James, the amazing director that he is, came to that. us uh, right away and was like, okay, here here is what this play is about. It's about this relationship, and here's all the scientific information. And as actors, we need to understand that, and we need to understand that so well that we can tell an audience that has no idea about quantum theory, about atomic physics, and we can explain it so ably that it doesn't seem overwhelming or overly complicated. And through our knowledge of it and our ability to explain it in the most simplistic terms and in this relationship, really has that, that ability to transcend to the audience what we're talking about without the confusion, without the need to know the details about the theory, because it's not about the details. It's about the interaction between us. And to, to drive that point home, another Nobel Prize physicist, Richard Feynman, in 1965, he won the Nobel Prize. He made the comment, if you think you understand quantum mechanics, then you don't understand quantum mechanics. So don't be intimidated by audience members because of the science. Uh, Michael Frayn, the playwright, I've actually uh, had some wonderful phone conversations with him, and he laughed when he talks about the play when it went into previews in New York. He shortly thereafter got a letter from a lady who had attended a performance, and she said, if you don't take out the science, no one's going to come see this show. Well, if he had taken out the science, it would have only been about a 15-minute show. But uh, truly, it is, it is about this, this amazing relationship that these men had, and then suddenly, in one instant, 20 years of friendship ended that never was regained again. So I hope you guys will come see the show. And you had something from the script that really impresses you? You, you know, well, put me on the spot, no pressure. <laughs> There's a lot of things that, from the script, but I, but I think it's, like my, one of my favorite lines in the script, of course, is, is the last one, and it says, by some event that will never quite be located or defined, by that core of the uncertainty at the heart of things. And I think that just really talks about the idea that this one meeting, this one moment in time, changed history for lots of people. And I think it's so powerful that we think of history as this huge entity, that there's so many variables and so many possibilities, and that history is so simple that it comes down to one evening between two physicists that changed the world, that saved lives, that did whatever that night did. I, that is remarkable. And, and unbelievable to me as, as an actor and as a person. To and I'm not going to try and top that. I've spent too many years in television. That's a great ending. So everyone, please come and see Copenhagen. We are uh, in the Andreas Theater, September 15th to the 18th.